a reading from the first book of Kings. In those days, Elijah's prophet went to Zarephath. As he entered the city, a widow was gathering sticks there. He called out to her, Please, bring me a small cupful of water to drink. She left to get it, and he called out after her, Please, bring along a bit of bread. She answered, As the Lord your God lives, I have nothing made. There is only a handful of flour in my jug and a little oil in my jar. Just now I was collecting a couple of sticks to go in and prepare something for myself and my son. When we have eaten it, we shall die. Elijah said to her, Do not be afraid. Go and do as you propose. But first, make me a little cake and bring it to me. Then you can prepare something for yourself and your son. For the Lord, the God of Israel, says, The jar of flour shall not go empty, nor the jug of oil run dry, until the day when the Lord sends rain upon the earth. She left and did as Elijah had said. She was able to eat for a year, and he, and her son as well. The jar of flour did not go empty, nor the jug of oil run dry as the Lord had foretold through Elisha. The word of the Lord. Thank you. 
enters each year into the sanctuary with blood that is not his own. If that were so, he would have to suffer repeatedly from the foundation of the world. But now, once for all, he has appeared at the end of the ages to take away sin by his sacrifice. Just as it is appointed that human beings die once, and after this the judgment, so also Christ, offered once to take away the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to take away sin, but to bring salvation to those who eagerly await him. The word of the Lord.
That wonderful short prayer to recognize that God is always present and that God's love is always ultimately for our own good. I thought of that prayer as I read our first quick reading and then our gospel reading for today. These readings with the widow being the particular focus of the readings. Isn't it interesting how often we hear about the widows in our readings? The Jewish theology really believed that the widows deserved a lot of help. They were recognized as those that would probably be in need. And the Jewish theology was, yeah, we, we really need to take care of our widows, as well as the orphans and the children. But it also seems that whenever the Jewish people began to ignore God's commandments, the widows were often the first ones that were forgotten. They felt the brunt of what was going on as people walked away from the commandments. Now, our first reading from 1 Kings, it said just at that kind of time. We have a ruler that has kind of just walked away from where God would want him to be. And as a result, all the people kind of follow his lead and follow the way. And as a result, a great famine has brought, been brought down on the people. And we see in this reading this lovely widow. She's lost the support of all around her. And at this point in her life, things couldn't seem to get much worse. She's down to her, probably her last meal. And after that, she's done. She and her son. And then this guy, Elijah, shows up. And he says, hey, take that last bit of grain, and I'd like you to make me a cake myself. And somehow that rhythm is able to do that. I don't know how she did it. Because I probably would have gone, hey, you need to get on out of here and find somebody else to have something. But at her lowest point, she has been generous. And because of that generosity, God blesses her with enough food and drink for the next year. Somehow that widow recognized God's desire for her generosity, even at what must have been the lowest time in her life. And we see that God returned that generosity. God's reading today is a similar widow. She's down to her last few cents. And somehow she contributes everything she has. Jesus specifically points her generosity. He says that her contribution is greater than all the others combined. So what do we take from this? Is this telling us that we just give everything of ours away? I would like to point out that I think it tells us that even in our lowest points in our life, somehow God is there always with us. And in our lowest points in our life, it can be really, really hard to feel like God is with us. We have so much going on that we can't really recognize how God is with us. He's always there. But sometimes we may hit a spot where someone we don't know comes up to us and asks for a little help. And we just feel like I've got so much going on and I can't, I just can't do it. But from this reading we see that may be the opportunity that God is giving us to say yes to just a little bit. And it probably won't be that someone's coming to us and saying, can I have your last few cents? It may be they just want to talk to us to hear what they have to say and to help them just get a little bit of a burden off them. And what I have heard 
from a few folks will let us have it, and they say, gosh, over that, I don't want to tell anyone about my trouble. When they recognized that other one and they opened up, that person became one of their best people to lean on going forward. So I think one of the things that, especially in my life, that when I have really hard times, I like to turn inward and I don't want to tell anybody. I think it's kind of a lack of humility on my part because I don't want anybody to know that I, I can't handle something. And that's probably true for some of us out here. I mean, it's human. And I have to tell you, it, it's, a, it's a struggle that I have, and sometimes poor Diane has to whack me over the head <laughs> and say, Tell me what in the world is going on. So I want to, I, I really want to tell you that when you are at those full flow points, there are people around you that God has put in place for you. Can't tell you who that person is. Can't tell you how you will be touched by that person. But Satan will do a lot of things to try to make you feel like you don't have friends and you don't have support. But God has put someone there in place. So be open to that. Now in our times of struggle, when we open ourselves to listening to somebody else come and talk to us, we may be that generosity that they need in some way. And that will be returned in some way by that relationship that we build. But I'd also say that within the church, remember what we have to offer, especially if you have sickness, physical problems, if you're struggling with some things. The church has much to offer you. Especially for me, I just went to, you know, my surgery. The father Danny was nice enough to give me a morning of the sick. Now, I don't know that that morning killed me immediately because I had surgery, but you know, I will tell you that every time I have an anointing and I go into surgery, I have a calm that is not clear when I don't have an anointing. So that is one thing that's available to you. You're also going to see in the bulletin that Nancy, Dr. Nancy Mullen is starting up a healing ministry here where you can be prayed of. Again, it may not physically cure you, but I have heard time after time how that healing calms you and allows you to feel somehow God's presence there to help you. So all of these things and others are relevant. Be open to others. Don't be like me where my wife has to come and beat me over the head and say, you need to do something. Be open as a devil. Because as Sister Ali always says, God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good.
Having listened to the word of God, having professed our faith, let us now place our needs before our Heavenly Father. <clears throat> For those who share our faith around the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord For government leaders and all who provide support services to veterans, we pray to the Lord. Lord For our veterans and all who have served our country, including those still struggling with the effects of the war, we pray to the Lord. For widows and widows and for their loved ones, we pray to the Lord. For all married couples celebrating the anniversary, including many in like the saints, that day they will grow in love for God and for each other. We pray to the Lord. Lord Lead the departed into the light of your dwelling place, including Roger Fox, that they may gaze upon you for all eternity. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For all of the intentions listed in our parish book of prayer, and for all of the intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Loving God, hear the prayers of your family before you and grant today what we have asked of you in faith. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. 